On this episode, I'm delighted to be joined by one of the finest footballers this country has ever produced. A man who has won the Premier League 11 times, two Champions Leagues and played over 700 times for his boyhood clubs. I was lucky to be an international teammate of his and the stuff he used to do in training would baffle all of us. This is the legend that is Paul Scholes. Scholesy, thanks for joining us. With all our guests, go right back to the start. Because although you're a household name, you're an enigma. Nobody really knows. What was it like growing up? Just very normal, working class background, I suppose, like everybody else. Um, just wanted to play yeah. any kind of sport I could do, whether it was football, cricket, anything, golf. I tried to get into anything. So, look, yeah, grew up in a good place. Um, I think it was a good place. Yeah. People a little back. Maybe say it was a little bit, a little bit rough, council estate, but yeah. you know, at the time I, I, I loved it. I really enjoyed what I was doing, you know, through the week, especially playing football at weekend. Yeah, Play football yeah, every yeah. night, don't you? I'm yeah, sure yeah, yeah, yeah. you were exactly the same, playing for just three or four different teams at once. So very sporting background. Following my dad everywhere. My dad playing Sunday morning football, Saturday afternoon yeah. amateur football. So it was always something sporty. Was you always a red? As a kid, I was a big United fan. Yeah. Right. Um, but couldn't really afford to go to games, to be honest right. with you. Um, my dad took me to the odd game. I remember coming to a game here against Chelsea, yeah. which would have been probably early 80s yeah. as a eight or nine year old kid. Uh, but my dad was a big Oldham fan. Right, oh, right, yes. So I ended up going to watch Oldham, and at yeah. the time, Oldham had you know, a quite successful and had yeah, a good team. Yeah, yeah, that was it, the Premier it was League. Good wasn't it? to watch, yeah, it's 10 minutes from my house. so... Yeah, they were in Premier League at the yeah. time, they had great cup runs. Yeah. So, yeah, um, ended up being a, an Oldham fan as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. So, you've, you've gone to Man United 14. Now, you hear the stories about how talented you was, but there was, pe was people doubting you because of your size yeah. and, yeah, did you have to come through that and deal with it? Well, yeah, you do. I think it's probably a, a, a mental thing, isn't it? Yeah. I, I had it from... Probably been 10, 11, 12 years of age yeah. when I was at Oldham at first. I was yeah. actually at Oldham School of Excellence first. And everybody just said, you'd be too small. There's no way you can be a footballer. You, you're too small. You can't cope yeah. physically with it. And it was never really something that put me off. It never yeah. affected me in a way. You don't know you're going to be a footballer. Do you? Everybody has a dream to be a footballer. Yeah. You, you never know it's going to happen. But size, because I, I felt from where I grew up, where I grew up and the teams are played for on Saturdays and Sunday mornings, that uh, it made you streetwise anyway, so yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. felt I could look after myself. I'm not saying fighting or anything, yeah. but I could, if I needed to look after myself on a football yeah. pitch, I, I felt I could do it. I, I never felt size was going yeah. to go against me. No, definitely. You could def I've got the scars <laughs> to prove it a few games. I know you could look after <laughs> yourself. The famous Paul Scholes tackles. <laughs> Obviously, the story's been told a thousand times, but... The class of 92, so you guys come through all together. I know how special that is because we had a similar yeah, thing with our West Ham team. We, yeah. we all come through and we won the Youth Cup culminating yeah. in that. How good was that team? We, we knew we were good. Well, so, so, I, don't, I don't mean that in an arrogant way because yeah. we, we were beating most teams. You know, yeah, you've got your yeah, Liverpools, yeah. you've got your Man Citys, yeah, yeah. you've got your Everton's, your local teams you're playing against. And most of the time we, we was winning the league every year as well. How close was... Alex Ferguson to the youth team and everything. Because back in, I remember Harry Redknapp with us. Yeah. He, he, he'd go and watch us on the Saturday yeah. before the Premier. You don't see that no. much now, do you? No, I, I think now there's a big detachment, isn't there, from yeah. managers even knowing who some of the under 18 players are. Yeah. I think at, at that point, at that point, you're in a small training ground. Yeah, there's yeah. probably one pitch, maybe an indoor pitch, and the manager knew everyone. The yeah. manager knew every single player that was, was in the building. Um, and they used to come and watch us. Um, I think there's probably a little buzz about the place that mm. you know we were beating teams four and five nil each week and you know, looking like a really good team and um, you know we had a f quite a few come to watch us. Yeah. On Saturday on Saturday morning had like a little bit of a following and that obviously progresses to the first team, doesn't it? And, yeah. You know if they're if they're playing at three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon they're coming down to watch us on a yeah. on a Saturday morning. It's quite nerve wracking because yeah, you know, yeah, you've yeah. got that glass window and you've got Paul Ince, Mark yeah, Hughes, yeah, Brian yeah. Robson, and all yeah, these yeah. legends of the club that you'd look up to, and then you've got the manager looking yeah. out of his office as well. It's 
It was quite nerve-wracking, but... It sounds so similar to the West. That's exactly what happened at West. Yeah. Obviously, to a lesser degree, because West Ham's a smaller club. Yeah. But Harry would come. Some of the first-team players would come. Yeah. And it would, like, you'd want to show them. Of course you would, that's, yeah. That, but it, just, that, it doesn't happen no more. It's interesting, isn't it? No, it doesn't happen no more. That's, uh, I think that's a shame, mate. Yeah. Um, you do. Because, you know, these, these young kids, they're looking up to these people. That, yeah. That's, you know, the first-team players are where they want to yeah. go. And that's exactly where we wanted to go. We wanted to, you know, be in the first team with Brian Robson. Or when Brian Robson leaves, we want to yeah. make that next step up. And I think that that's something that is is missing now. Um, but it's something we we look we was lucky enough yeah. to have. 1994, you make your debut in the League Cup to score two goals. Yeah. How, how did that feel for you? Special. I was a centre yeah. forward then, actually. Yeah. So off the front man. Off the you? front. Well, more of a number nine, actually. Really? Believe, believe it or not, yeah. So you was a number nine? I, yeah, I grew up as a number nine. Did you? Yeah. I'd never ever played midfield. And I said, I was just a goal scorer. Yeah. And I grew up from being nine, ten years of age, playing yeah. in a football team. I was just a centre yeah. forward who, who scored goals all the time. Yeah. Came then to the youth team um, as a centre forward again. Yeah. Um, Eric Harrison always said to me, no, you'll be a central midfield player. Yeah. And he ended up being, being right, really. From the outside of looking in, every, I think like Ferguson, Sir Alex, he, he, he made this culture at the club where even players who didn't make the grade at Manchester United but come through the youth team, they had that Man United way about them. Like, the one word they always used was desire. Yeah. That desire and determination yeah. to win games of football. Even when you're not your best, there's always yeah. there's that competitive edge. And, if he sensed, sensed for one minute that desire had possibly gone out of you. Was he a master at sensing it in players? Because yeah. he yeah. seemed to get players out the door yeah. in this period in particular. Yeah. Do you, I know he had you guys coming through, but do you yeah. think he, he was brilliant that weren't he, Ferguson? Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah. He, there was just that psychological edge over him. If you, if you shown a little bit of weakness or a little bit of... Yeah. A little bit of a sign that that desire or that, that hunger, that fire in your belly yeah. had gone. He, he was on it straight away. Yeah. You know, Pre-season especially, that was, you know, first day of training. If you come back from winning the league mm. or you've won the FA Cup, he knows then if that, yeah. that's the time, right, and he's ready to go again. What do you think made that team in 99? So, so I think I've heard you saying you think that was the best squad that you've I, I think in. so, yeah. yeah. I, I think what many... made it so special? When I think of great football, I always think about the forwards, me. The yeah. centre forwards. Um, yeah. I think that team had four of the best centre forwards it's been. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you could start with Andy Cole and Dwight York. Yeah. And if they're not, if it's not happening for them after yeah. an hour, you've got Teddy Sheringham, and Ollie Gunner. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, and that was just... I just think that was the, the beauty of that team. And it just never kept going. There's obviously disappointments and... We were, we were mentally strong as well, yeah, and yeah. There's, you know, there's always going to be pressure to win. Of course, especially when you come down to the last week, yeah. the last two weeks. Because the trouble wasn't really spoke of that much yeah. until probably be Arsenal in the semi-final at yeah, the yeah. FA Cup. So you know what a great, yeah. great team Arsenal were. And then that led to the final of the FA Cup and then Tottenham and, 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 and finally Bayern Munich. But I just think the spirit in the squad, the quality of the squad, yeah. And the centre forwards, I just felt, felt with them centre forwards, you score goals all the time. Yeah. Okay, we might concede, yeah. but I always felt with them forwards, you give them service. Yeah. There's just so many goals there. I always remember with Brian Kidd, um, probably shouldn't say this on here, but I used, I, I used to um, pick Kidd up when we were going to away games and stuff, you yeah. know, for me and his services, and we've got to sign Dwight York. And he, he, he actually said at the time, said, Dwight York and Andy Cole can't play together. There's no really? chance. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely no chance. And then, you know, you look and the 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 connection they had yeah. on and off the field was yeah. Well, do you know what? You can't predict that. No, no, no. It, no, it no. might have been a lot of people's opinion. You don't yeah. know, but eventually, when they came together, it was just unbelievable. Remember, I think it was a game in Juventus. When the, oh, I'm incredible. I mean, you had a massive part to play in that, leading up goals against Inter Milan. You know, but to miss the final skulls for a kid from Manchester United, hmm. what, you know, how tough was that? Yeah, look, it was disappointing, but yeah. it's something you just have to deal with, don't you? I, I won't be the first, and I, I won't mm. be the last. Roy was, Roy was the same as well. Um, People forget that. You and Roy yeah. missed the game. The heartbeat of the t and, and Man United, that's how good the squad was. Yeah, well, exactly. And 
Do you know what? It's probably debatable if I'd have played anyway, because a lot of them European games that year, away from home especially, I didn't mm. play. As a central midfield player, I was probably lacked a little bit of discipline mm. in actually playing that position. It's because I didn't grow up playing that position, I probably didn't know it as well as other yeah. people. Um, whereas, you know, Roy was brilliant in that position, Nicky Butt was brilliant, they played yeah. that position well. I was just concentrating on scoring goals, I yeah. just wanted to get forward. And yeah. In European away games especially, it probably wasn't more suited. So, look, I might have played some part of it, but whether I started, yeah. I don't know. But Roy definitely was a, was a big miss, and you know, watching the game, we didn't play that well. We were, we were quite lucky, and really, I, that we, everyone knows that. Yeah. But as I said, our forward players, yeah. you always know there's a chance we can score goals. and We left it a little bit late, but, but managed to do it. Yeah, well, it's certainly iconic. I was actually in Manchester watching it. Was it really? Yeah. Yeah, don't tell no one. I was, uh, <laughs> I was in a pub in Manchester. I come up to see me pal and ended up... I got right involved, does that mean? Yeah. Was, you're watching football. I it, was, imagine, it, was yeah. a, it was a good... Let me tell you, Manchester was a good night that night. Yeah. <laughs> the team was struggling, really. I felt fit, I felt great. Yeah. I might come back. I fancy coming back and playing again. So I went. I went to see the manager one morning, and he said, "Yeah, great. Let's get. Let's get it done." Our paths crossed with England. You was actually you and Phil. When I turned up at Bisham Abbey as an 18-year-old, you guys were the first ones I've seen. You had a chat with me, made me feel welcome. Mm. I think that was '99, maybe. I mean, from my perspective, in your England career, you know, you, you used, certainly when I was there, you used on the left, weren't you? Was that a source of frustration for you? Because I looked at you and think, you're the best central midfielder in the country. Uh -huh. You know, it just seemed like... Yeah. I could sense a frustration. But that, no, I don't think it was that frustrated, yeah. Joe, to be honest, because... No. So obviously you had Stephen and Frank yeah. as well, two, two yeah. brilliant players, um, two brilliant centre mid midfielders that Sven yeah. obviously had a, uh, had a problem with. Um, I think the, the trouble when I play centre, people, they expected me to score goals mm. all the time from that position. Yeah. Um, and I think the older I got, I became more of a controlling midfield player. Yeah. Which I think probably would have been more suited to, yeah. to, to, to playing for England. And, in those type of games, probably I just didn't play as well for England as I did mm. for United because I played a lot for Man United in that left hand side position because Ryan yeah. obviously had a lot of a lot of injury yeah. problems, hamstrings and backs, yeah. and whenever he wasn't playing, I did actually play off the left hand side. Obviously, mm. I'm not going to be a wide player. Yeah, I'm not going to be going down the outside. And, yeah, but I always find it a nice little position to play. Yeah. Because you can get yourself into the box, you can free yeah. yourself. There's not yeah. many. The fullback doesn't know whether to yeah. come towards you. The centre midfield the players obviously worried about his central midfield player. So I found it a great position for for Man United. Just for England, it just never, mm. never had the same understanding in that role. I don't think. Just from my perspective, watching you play, it was a privilege to 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 train with you and watch and try and learn from you. But when you retired in 2004, it opened. a I wouldn't have played. I had 56 game caps for England. I don't think I'd have played if you'd have carried on playing. Was that a tough decision, Scalzi, to walk away at that time? It wasn't something that I enjoyed doing. Yeah. I just wasn't... With England, I just wasn't enjoying playing the football. Yeah. I wasn't enjoying being away from home. Yeah. I had young kids. Yeah. Had three young kids, and you are going away six weeks at a time. Yeah. So I, just, I just didn't like it, and yeah. I felt that was probably affecting what what was happening on the pitch as well, so yeah. I, I decided that was that. You did, listen, you've got to respect that, Scholes. You marched to your own drum and, and that's yeah. how you feel. Some of the goals you scored were iconic. What was your favourite one? I'm going to say the one you scored against Bradford. No, the Villa, the volley. The vo is it Villa? Yeah, the Aston Villa yeah, was the best yeah. one. That's the best one, wasn't it? But it's, it's practice. We, I remember doing it with you all the time. We, yeah. Me and you used to stay behind him. Yeah. Shooting with Steve McLaren all the time. And yeah. Like, it doesn't... I always felt if you practice, then there's every chance it's going to happen yeah, in the game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the amount of time I used to see at uh, Man United, you got to send it forward, you don't do shooting. It's incredible, isn't it? Don't do shooting, practice after a yeah. game. I, I just couldn't get it. But th the big example of that was Berbatov. Yes, I've been told about this. Great, ta unbelievable talent. Never yeah. did any finishing. No, look, don't get me wrong, he scored some great goals. Yeah. But he'd never, like, he'd never. Berbatov going to do a few shots after they get. No. 
just sit down and watch. I, I don't know what it was. It must mm. be a mentality behind it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. saving it, saving it for the game. Yeah. I don't know, but and then there's other periods think of Ruud van Nistelrooy would just shoot all day long. Yeah. D didn't want to play football. He just wanted to bang the ball in the back of the net, and you know you, you get re your rewards and that. But everybody's different. Aren't yeah. They? You get to 08. We go to that. We go to Moscow. Game. It's, that was the, the obviously the worst experience and one of the worst games because playing against your rivals in that level. But for yourself, after missing 99, how special was it to be given a nod? Didn't feel great physically, to be honest with you. Really? Yeah, I, f I felt like I was struggling. Um, and I, I didn't want it to be a sympathy vote, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, Because you know, yeah. a lot of people still talk about 99, not playing. Yeah. And I know the manager was asked that leading up to it. And I, something inside me felt like it was a little bit of a, a sympathy vote that I was going to play. Mm. Rightly or wrongly, that, that, that was just... The way it felt, and you know, physically, I just wasn't. Mm. I knew, legs-wise, I didn't feel great. Um, but play did, didn't have a lot of involvement in the game. To be honest, I had a little clash with Makalila early yeah. on, which, which yeah. brought me no one's. Like you say as well, it's a bit dis not disappointing. You don't want to play against an English team no. in a the biggest game. You're yeah. expecting a you know, whatever European yeah. team it is. You feel something yeah. feels slightly wrong about it. Yeah. Um, but we knew how good Chelsea were. Look, it, it was 50-50, wasn't it? Yeah. I've said this before, rightly or wrongly, when I, when I was thinking about leading up to that game, I just, might sound stupid, this, I just thought, how could, how could Avram Grant beat Alex Ferguson? Yeah. I, I don't know what, yeah. look. Yeah, the, no, like, great fair, manager. Fair, I, fair, I, fair, I, fair I just looked at... Yeah. Both managers thought it's just not possible. I, yeah. I know it is possible, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. a stupid way to think. But yeah. I just thought the stature of the both managers, the presence of our manager yeah. against your manager, I thought we just. That's I don't think we can lose, but yeah. really we should have done. With obviously John slipped and yeah. and missed his penalty. Well, another thing that I find incredible about your career is you, you retired, and I remember hearing the rumours. Oh, it's popped up the football update. Skulls is coming out of retirement. I think. I think of all the players I've played with, there's probably only one... There's a handful of people who I think could have done that. Because of your technical ability was so supreme, you just have to, like, we're getting fit for two weeks and it'll be great. And then you come back <laughs> and you won another league. I mean, what was the thought process? Yeah. What was you, was you, did you, was there something missing? Did you or the urge to get back or...? Yeah, well, I think the first time I was 35, wasn't I? Um, yeah. And like I said, a couple of years before in the, in the Champions League, I didn't feel great. Right. Physically, I just felt like I was... Just couldn't live with playing against the best players anymore. Yeah, um, and that's what I wanted to do. Uh, yeah, you know, the manager always said, "Look, you play your 20 games, your 25 yeah. games, plus probably against mm. probably not the biggest games." Yeah, um, and I wanted to play in the big games. Right, uh, you know yourself. Every player yeah. wants to play in the big games, and you want to give a good account of yourself. Um, of, of, of course you do, but I just wasn't feeling great. I'd had three months off. The manager wanted me to come and coach with the reserves. Right. Um, I kind of got forced into that in a way because I, I, coaching was never something I was really yeah. that interested. Don't get me wrong, when I do it, yeah. when I have to do it, I, I, I do quite enjoy it. Yeah. Um, but it was never something I really wanted to go into and he, he wanted me to come back out at extended break, came mm. in with Warren Joyce with the reserves. And the reserves, at, the reserves at United at that time, under 23s, whatever it was, had a really talented bunch of players. Right. They were the likes of Paul Pogba, Jesse Lingard, all these types of lads that yeah. you know, were good, good and they were beaten career. every week. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Um, and because I wasn't enough interested that much in the culture, I just ended up training. Yeah. So uh, Warren Joyce is known, he, he's training his hard. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He has the fittest team in the club without, right. with, without a doubt. With him. You right. know, international breaks, first team players don't want to go and train really? with Joyce because it's that yeah. hard. Uh, but Brynn, I really enjoyed it. We yeah. got to Christmas time and the team was struggling, really. They, yeah. they had a few injuries, I think. I think Rafa de Silva or Fabio, one of them, one of the twins was playing centre midfield. It was there against right. Blackburn and we got beat. Yeah. So I said it to Joyce, I, I felt fit, I felt great. And, I might come back. I fancy coming back and playing again. So you asked or let it or did you? Yeah, I, I just threw a few feelers out first, yeah. see what staff thought. Yeah. I went to see Joyce, I saw 
yeah. McPhelan as well. Yeah. Um, and he said, yeah, go for it. So what? I went I went to see the manager one morning and he said, yeah, great, let's get, let's get it done. Since you've ret been retired, you've taken some time off, but you, you took the Oldham job. You said earlier on, your boyhood club. Did you enjoy it? Would you do it again? It was never, like I said, culture was never re really something I enjoyed, but I was struggling finding something that I did yeah. enjoy. Yeah. I'd done a little bit of media work, obviously with BT, but yeah. I'm not saying it's something that I, I love doing. Yeah. I, I couldn't replace yeah. playing football. It, look, being a manager didn't replace it. It only lasted for a month, but yeah. while I was there, I really enjoyed it. There were circumstances that made it very difficult to yeah. to do it. And I, would I do it again? Probably not now. Mm. Did a little spell off, obviously with Salford for five games. I yeah. did, look, I enjoy it. Little short yeah. spells. Like that. I enjoy working with players. Yeah. No, it's not something now I'd, I'd, I'd be looking to get into. Quick fire round, Scolzi. Who was the most underrated player you played with? You played with him as well. Um, Michael Carrick. Yes. I'd, when I say, probably wasn't underrated. Underrated massive. People knew how good he was, but I don't, I don't think people realise how good he was. If there's one moment in your career you could go back and change, what would it be? Probably tackling Deschamps in that semi-final against Juventus where he got suspended. It wasn't a bad tackle, actually. He just mm. made, a, he made a meal of it. If you had to bet your life on someone to score a free kick, who would take it? David Beckham. Yeah. I don't think you was in the warm-up room in Japan in 2002. We was all in there messing about trying to hit a clock. He walked in before the Argentina game, hit it three times in a row, the clock <laughs> fell down and walked out, and I was just like, I was having one of them moments, I was like, yeah. I'm never going to get to the top. <laughs> no if a player can do that. It was incredible. Oh, so accurate. His free kick, yeah. he's passing, isn't he? Passing. Yeah. Well, yeah. People yeah. just talk, think about his yeah. crossing, really, don't yeah. they? But his, his long passes into Andy yeah. Cole and Dwight yeah. Yorley. Brilliant. Least favourite away ground? The artist is Anfield. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt for yeah. us. I don't yeah. know what it's like no, for no, Chelsea. Same, same, yeah, yeah. But for us, yeah. it was hostile, it was tight. When I finished playing for a while, I used to speak, go and see this chief scout a little bit. And they always said, to find a player for Man United, an attribute we have to think about is, can they go to Anfield and play? Is that right? Because it's so tight, you've yeah, got to be yeah, yeah. awareness, you've got to know yeah. everything around you. Yeah. you just got to be able to handle it. And yeah. Yeah, Anfield was definitely tough. From a younger player playing similar position to you, it was an absolute joy to, to just play with a few times for England in the crossover yeah. and wish you all the very best in the future. Cheers, Joe. Thanks, Cheers, mate. pal. Enjoyed Good to that. see you. Thank you.